you. Good morning. So, but as you've heard, my name's Ian Bankars. I am at the Ontario Institute for Cancer Research, and I am here to talk about sharing and updating our modular system for clinical report generation, which is called Gerba. All right, so what is clinical reporting? Cancer is a disease of the genome. Mutations occur, you have a population of cells growing out of control, and the result is cancer. So we have a clinically accredited assay, which starts with genome sequencing. Uh, we then have an extremely thorough set of pipelines for analysis and variant detection, with a total of 47 workflows in our clinical pipeline. And Gerba sits at the end of this process. The idea of Gerba is to collate all this huge amount of information together into an easily digestible clinical report, which we can hand to the physician for an individual patient. So the report looks like this. It's a printable PDF, typically five or six pages, depending how many variants we found. At the top, we have a nice neat logo and some letterhead information about who we are. Further down, still on page one, we have basic information about the patient and the cancer. And we also have actionable mutations. This is the number one thing physicians want to know. Um, these are mutations we have found which have some sort of recommended course of treatment as listed in OncoKB. So yet further down, we have more information, more detail. Um, we describe more about the mutations we found, whether they're actionable or not. And further down still, we have glossaries, we have software versions, we have disclaimers, we have a sign-off section. Each of our reports is signed off by a clinical geneticist. And all of this makes one self-contained document which can go out into the clinic. So how do we make it? Gerba is based around four very commonly used file formats. So for configuration, we use an INI file. Um, we then extract our data, we find metrics, we produce plots and tables. All of that is recorded in a machine-readable JSON file. Uh, we use HTML as our typesetting language, so this controls the look and feel of the document and also has something we can upload to a uh, web server if we so wish. And then finally, we publish it as a printable PDF. Okay, so here's a snippet of INI. It should be familiar to you. You have a section header in square brackets at the top, which contains the name of the plugin. Uh, we use lots of plugins to make a report. I'll get to that later. And then we have a key value pair. So we have some output from the Sequenza tool, which does copy number analysis. So we then extract JSON, which looks something like this. At the top, you have some housekeeping with the name and version of the plugin. You then have some global metrics for how many CNVs we found, and then details on each individual oncogenic CNV of interest. So this is really good. It served us well for some time, but bioinformatics never stands still. We're always having to reinvent things and use new tools. And the Sequenza plugin is no longer supported, but there's a new one called Purple, which we believe will do better. So we need to update. So we made a new plugin. Uh, so the INI, as you can see, has changed new plugin name, new inputs. The output, the JSON, has changed very little. We only changed the name of the plugin. And that means all the downstream stuff, the HTML templates, the PDF, we can reuse that. It allows for much more rapid software development and updating. So the JSON provides a template of the essential data that we need to capture for these metrics. So the first assay we implemented using Gerbo was whole genome tumor normal and whole transcriptome sequencing. It uses 15 plugins. I won't read them all out, but you can see them there. The names should be suggestive of what they do. And once again, bioinformatics moves on. We have new assays we want to support. So a new assay we now have is plasma whole genome, where we sequence uh, plasma samples to detect re residual disease. So this uses a set of 10 plugins. Some, as you can see, are just directly lifted over. Others are new. Uh, some of the new plugins are very closely based on the old plugins. So pwgs.sample, very similar to wgts.sample. Um, and some of them are more novel. So pwgs analysis does a lot of new stuff that we didn't need to do before. So the front pages of the respective reports look like this, so you can see the design features are largely shared. They have some common information at the top. 
Further down, the um, whole genome transcriptome report is much more detailed. It describes many different kinds of variants. Plasma whole genome, either we find residual disease or we don't, so that's what we report. And we then, further down, which is not shown, we have explanation and glossary and things of that nature. So we are sharing Gerba across Canada. We have a working group, which is part of the Marathon of Hope initiative. Uh, we are working with UHN in Toronto, OICR is also in Toronto. We're working with McGill here in Montreal, as well as the University of Calgary and the BC Genome Sciences Center. So the proof of concept for this is working. We have got our partner sites running Gerba plugins themselves. And the next step will be for them to write or modify plugins and make their own customized reports. So that concludes my talk on Gerba. Gerba is open source. It is licensed under GPL 3.0. It is on GitHub. And that QR code will take you to a demo, which you can download and run yourselves. So that concludes my talk. Thank you very much.